So some information about the light setup. First of all, we're using V-Ray for rendering. Another important factor that we have set up in this file is a render camera set up as a V-Ray physical camera so you can adjust the film gate, focal length, more importantly the ISO so you can really uh, use a low ISO number and crank up the lights and have less noise in your actual render. So let's go into our first render and render from the render camera. So there's one positive, which is that the hair is rendering. Right now it looks like clay around his head. Something needs to be done about the width. And the surfacing on the hair is the default Lambert shader. So we need to do something about that. And finally, it seems like the density is not matching what we have in the viewport. Um, so let's start with that. If we select the Yeti nodes and go into the display render palette, you'll notice that there is a render density attribute. And it's currently set at 10. What this means is that it's only rendering 10% of the density. Let's match the render density with the viewport density and do the same for the other Yeti nodes. Now let's go back to the render buffer and render this again. So here we go. Now the density is more in line with what we're seeing in the viewport. So what we had before, what we have now. One problem solved. Now let's move on to the width. Uh, so that's something that we need to go to the graph editor to address. If we select the mullet, we have to add a width node. So the way that the width node works is whatever width node is closest to the end is what will be taken into account. Let's take this piece. So let's add a width node in front of it. Defaults to a width of 1, so let's set this to 0.1. This is the width multiplier, so you have base width and tip width and all the settings in between similar to how they work for clumping. So let's turn on the uh, the width node and say if we set that to 5 we see the width change. So originally it's set to 1 which is similar to what we're seeing in the render. Let's set it to 0.1. Now it looks a little bit like the width of actual hair. And if we go to the root and add a width node here and we set this width to 5, all the hair is going to be of this width. So if you wanted to vary the width, you want to put them in front and not have a width node along the connections path that would change that. So in this case we want to have all the hair one width since it's all technically a single body of hair. So let's get rid of the width node over in the Quaff network and let's set this to 0.1 over here and render. So if we went and checked back to where we were we're seeing a change in the width of the general hair but the eyebrows and the rest remain the same width. So now let's add width nodes to the rest of the hair pieces. So let's render again and here we go. A lot better. Let's add some shaders first so that we can adjust the width with the proper surfacing. So let's go to the node editor and create a hair shader. Since we're using V-Ray, let's use the V-Ray Hair Next shader. And there are many settings to play with. V-Ray's documentation online is very thorough. The shader is actually pretty interesting and it'll get us where we need to get rather quickly uh, with the use of the melanin attribute. Let's right now set it to Jet Black. Let's name this Hair 
shader. Now let's select the mullet Yeti node and assign material. Let's go ahead and render. And we got something other than putty gray happening. So now let's create some shaders for the rest of the hair pieces. Let's refer to the reference to see what color to aim for. So we have Kurt Russell with what looks to be a light brown. So we have to pull back on the jet black. Let's see what 0.5 looks like. And let's apply the shader. So eyebrows to eyebrows. And here we go. Let's see. Let's go back to the image. I think we might still have to go a little bit lighter, but it's closer. What I am noticing here is that the tips are still a little too straw-like, uh, which can be addressed by adjusting the width, but there's also something else that we want to do uh, to soften the ends, and that's adding transparency to the strand length. So let's take the hair and let's create a hair sampler node. So if we use V-Ray hair sampler, this will pull information per strand and we can use this to apply ramps along the length of the strand. So let's create a ramp. Let's set the distance along strand attribute and plug it into the V coordinates. And then we can add this to the transparency. What we have is a ramp going from black to white. White being fully transparent and black being opaque. Now let's render a portion. Here we go. So if we compare so before, after, before, after. It softens the look a lot more. So let's leave it as is for now. The beard, since it's been shaven, I don't think that we need to soften the fiber ends, but the eyebrows and the eyelashes might need this. To save some render time, let's hide the pieces of hair that are outside of the uh, frame of view. So what I want to do next is adjust the transparency on the um, on the eyelashes and eyebrows. Eyebrows, I think I don't want the entire body of the fiber to be transparent. Eyelashes, eyelashes are already pretty pretty small so I'm going to make only the very ends of them transparent and I want to adjust the width let's try half of what we have right now eyelashes 0 0.03 I think we need to go a little bit lighter and already a lot better let's get a full faced render and see how we're looking so the render's done the thing that is bothering me right now is the beard it's looking a little splotchy so let's take a closer look at that <laughs> 